Hello, I'm Harriet Austin, the Family Discipline Director for the LEND program at the University of Colorado. You're going to be watching a video we developed to teach LEND trainees about best practices for giving feedback to families after an evaluation. We'll be focusing on psychologists giving the diagnosis and recommendation for children with an autism spectrum diagnosis, but the principles behind giving good feedback apply equally well to other professions too. The video incorporates the comments and experiences of actual psychologists and parents and is meant to be used in class discussion and along with the accompanying instructor's manual. Thank you so much. Well, it's great to see you guys today. Good to see you, Harriet. Good to see you. So I was wondering what kind of experiences you guys have had with feedback over the years. Well, you know, with our family, feedback has varied a lot. Uh, depending on the diagnosis, the severity, uh, depending on the person delivering it. You know, everybody has a different style, everybody maybe has a different schedule the day you happen to, to get it. So it's really run the gambit for us. And for us, we've had multiple um, sessions, feedback sessions. And I would say, depending on kind of the compilation of the group, and how, how many, how comfortable they felt in giving the diagnosis. I think that all played a role in how effective and um, how well it went, how well it was received. Yeah, yeah, we've had a variety as well. We have three children, and so we've had different diagnoses actually for all three, from mm -hmm. chronic medical to, um, to autism, and it actually took us two evaluations to get to the autism diagnosis. How do you think feedback sets you up for later success or failure? How do you think it can play out over the years and is so important that it go well? I can speak to mine and then other families that I know of, but our very first one went very, very well, was very positive, helped me engage, um, helped me become very much a, a partner in the process and I could then become very proactive. Um, I know for other families they haven't always had that experience and it's been very difficult to get on board and become a really strong advocate because it went in a negative direction. So, Yeah, yeah, and I know we've had that experience. I mentioned that my my um, son had two evaluations for autism and the first was when he was five and we did not get the, the diagnosis but I actually suggested it and went in with a whole series of these are the symptoms, we're seeing repetitive behaviors, we're seeing meltdowns, um, we're seeing rigidity around routines, um, we're seeing pronoun reversal, um, he's not interacting with other kids at preschool. He doesn't know how to interact with them. Um, he'll stand on the side of the playground and just watch and not know how to engage. Um, and so I had, I felt some really valid concerns and reasons why I brought up a potential autism diagnosis, only to be told, no, you know, that's really not the diagnosis. Um, and so, as I mentioned, it was five years later before mm -hmm. You know, we felt that we had done our job as parents to go in and seek out an evaluation to bring these questions up and then this was not a person with a lot of expertise in autism, but it was a neuropsychologist um, and, uh, and so we were delayed by five years before we, we finally did. It made it very, it gets back to the importance of feedback because it made it very difficult to explain my child in school and we had a number of failures as a result. Um, and it made, I, I think our parenting might have been different if we had really understood where some of these behaviors were coming from. I've only been observing feedback for a few months now, pretty much since I started the LEND program. And I'm just really impressed by how differently they can play out and how feedback how the feedback session goes really can be a big turning point for the family. So what do you think is the ideal outcome for a feedback? Um, I think that most parents have a general sense of their child's strengths and weaknesses anyway. And so 
what I'm hoping to accomplish in the feedback session is to sort of translate their child's strengths and weaknesses into um, a diagnosis that makes sense to them and to the people who will be doing the intervention. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, I think feedback is a really important part of the evaluation process. And the way I think of it, it's almost like the capstone to what we've been working with families on throughout an evaluation, however long that takes. Um, so you start thinking about feedback really right from the very start of an evaluation, whether that's reviewing a chart or greeting a family, finding out what their goals are, what questions they want answered in the evaluation. And then feedback is really an opportunity to answer those questions for families, whether it's about a specific diagnosis or treatment or a direction to take. Um, so this is something that's important for families. They've been waiting a long time to find out the answers to their questions. I think it's an opportunity for them to have a good discussion about what are their child's strengths and challenges and how to move forward with that. And then again, what to think about next. What are the next steps and how to work together to um, accomplish those goals. The best experiences we had were um, complete information, direct information, so that we as a team could, you know, figure out, okay, where are we at today? What are the most important elements for a good feedback? Well, again, I think you want to think about feedback before you even start an evaluation. So for me, one element of a good feedback session is preparation and thinking from the very start, again, what are the questions we want answered? What how are we best going to help this family and this child to um, get the most they can out of the evaluation and meet their needs? Then we do the evaluation with that question in mind as we go along, as we're um, evaluating a child, helping a family know what steps we're taking to answer their questions, certainly making sure that families know that they're part of this process and really including them in the evaluation process, not just to get information from them, which of course we're going to do, but really to get their observations about how's the evaluation going, do, are we seeing typical behaviors, the kind of behaviors they're concerned about, are, are things going the way they would expect, do we need to do something different than what we're doing to help answer our questions, do we have to talk to other people, so really involving families in the process all the way along. Um, then we get to the actual feedback session after we've done that, um, and that's going to happen at different times depending on how a clinic is organized. It might happen right after an evaluation is completed, like that same day, or it might happen a week or two later, and that can really vary. And I work in two different clinics actually where <laughs> um, it does vary in both those ways. Um, but either way, once you sit down and start a feedback session, I think it's time to review what's been done talk with the family again. Um, if the feedback happens later, really finding out if anything's changed from the time of the initial evaluation till the time of feedback. Um, making sure families know what did we do? What were all those evaluations? Who were all those people if there was more than one person involved mm -hmm. in the evaluation? <clears throat> what questions were they trying to answer? I like to go over once again what a parent's role in the evaluation was. So that's all sort of that introductory section. Um, then the next section is really talking about the diagnosis, which um, is key and is often one of the parents' most pressing questions and certainly something we typically need to address even if it isn't something that parents are particularly interested in hearing. Um, so that would be sort of the third area. And then finally, um, we would move to recommendations and really talking about next steps. So again, just to kind of summarize that, I would say there is um, a preparatory period before feedback starts. Then you have your actual session where you'd have sort of an introductory period, um, a time to talk about diagnosis and results, and then a time to talk about recommendations. I think those are two really important points, um, that the feedback sort of happens throughout the evaluation and from beginning before you meet the child and the family. Um, you're thinking about how it's going to turn out and how you're going to convey that in, a, uh, in the most helpful way. Um, and I think I do a lot of teaching during the course of the evaluation, I'm sure that you do too, especially if the family has a suspicion of a particular type of difficulty or especially if, if they maybe don't have very much knowledge about a particular type of 
um, difficulty, then I will do a lot of teaching about the things that I'm seeing or not seeing that either worry me or reassure me. And so that's a little bit of a little bit of feedback that gets mm -hmm. them ready for the big mm -hmm. feedback in the end, I think. Um, and then I think the other the other thing that you mentioned that was really important was, um, the parents as important contributors and participants in the team that does the evaluation. Um, and I often tell parents that I think they're pretty good psychologists because mm. it often turns out that we're worried about the same things and we're happy about the same things. And so it turns out that the parents were actually pretty good evaluators before they came to see us for the evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, the, other, the other piece, um, that I think is kind of critical in a feedback is that it's um, it's an emotional crisis kind of for the family. It's it's a big moment. Um, parents will tell you that they they don't remember when all the various milestones were reached, but they remember the day that they got the diagnosis. And so it can be a really um, it can be a big moment in the landscape of the family. Um, and I think the way that we present it can be important in their acceptance of the diagnosis as a piece of the kid and a piece of the family. Um, and certainly we have to present the diagnosis, if there is one, with all of the obstacles that are true of that diagnosis, but I think too that we can present it as a piece of this valuable kid who is a piece of this valuable family and having a diagnosis really hasn't changed the kid who walked in the door. Um, and I think that that is helpful to mm -hmm. families in their processing of receiving what could be a pretty difficult diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I think those are great points. I'd like to actually pick up on a couple of things you said around that. Um, in talking with parents, as we're doing the evaluation, I do agree that's just so critical, whether it's sharing an observation or making sure parents know what we're doing and why while mm -hmm. we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So if we've got a, using a particular assessment tool, what is that tool and why are we doing it? What are we hoping to find out? by using that mm -hmm. with their child. Um, and checking in with parents along the way too, so that if you know, if parents are experiencing the evaluation and if they have an opportunity to observe mm -hmm. and see part of what's going on, if they think we're not seeing behaviors that they usually right. see, it's really important to know that. We may need to shift course during the evaluation, do something different, help the child warm up more or present mm -hmm. some other tasks, or maybe even think about scheduling yet another day for an evaluation. So one piece that's really important mm -hmm. for me in thinking through is be, when we're done for that day, before we're ready to do, go to the feedback stage to make sure we've gotten the information we need and to talk with parents about, did mm -hmm. we see it? Did mm -hmm. we see your child's strengths? Did we see the behaviors you're concerned about? Are the reasons why you came in? And if not, what do we need to do about that so that we do have that information and we can make an informed decision and give you informed information about your child that's not so radically different from what you see mm -hmm. every day at home. I mean, there will be differences, but then we could at least understand those and have a basis mm -hmm. for comparing notes, basically, which I think is part of what mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. Parents really know their children. We need to respect that. We need to take their information and their observations and incorporate it into our evaluation process. The, the clinical information is one piece of the equation. A clinician understands the clinical aspect and, and, and maybe the, the details of a particular diagnosis, whatever it may be, um, but no one knows the child like the parents and the clinician can't have that level of understanding. So the, the clinical diagnosis is one part of the information needed to move forward. The very first um, time we had an evaluation and the feedback session, I was asked at every point, you know, what are your thoughts about this? How do you see your daughter in these settings? How, um, how does she react with you? And so at every point I was included and um, partnered with. And certainly they would ask, you know, this was an observation we saw. What What do you think? Is this kind of uh, congruent with what you know you've been seeing? So it was very much the the um, 
point of um, being an active member of the team, but you know, there's certainly other experiences that haven't been that way, and you felt very much the outsider, and when you would interject, they might look at you with skepticism and say, are you sure your child is really doing that? Or, you know, yeah. that kind of questioning your, um, your own awareness.